Things are gonna be much better if you only will. For those of you who do not know me, my name is Selena Baugh, and I'm one of the practitioners here that is in service to this community, our community. In this philosophy, we teach and put into practice a five-step spiritual mind treatment or affirmative prayer, which powerfully sets into motion the creative process. You know, I always tell people, we're all practitioners. Studying to be a practitioner just gives me a few more tools and makes me question everything. <laughs> as, I, as a practitioner, I have learned, which has never failed to serve, is to question and explore my own thoughts and beliefs. So over the years, I have spent time exploring the various steps of treatment in depth, and I started with step three, because I never do anything conventionally, <laughs> which is the affirmation step. And Reverend Donald had some uh, influence on that, with him and his red pen. <laughs> and then I went to step five, which is the release step, which is the hardest for me. And after exploring that, I realized it was a matter of trust. Step four was easy. I actually started with gratitude long before I found this philosophy in a 12-step program when my sponsor at that time challenged me to do a gratitude journal and write five things every day. At the time, I wasn't pleased. Now, my life is filled with gratitude. This year, I decided to explore steps one, recognition, and steps two, unification. I learned those, as anybody that takes any basic class here will learn. But I hadn't really do what I call the lock and load, where I really know it in every fiber of my being. I started because I had this quote from Dr. Ernest Holmes. During the process of spiritual mind treatment, also known as affirmative prayer, scientific prayer, or simply treatment, we come to the realization an affirmative prayer is a recognition of spirit's omniscience, omnipotence, and omnipresence, and a realization of humanity's unity with spirit. Now that comes from the Science of Mind textbook, page 149. There was a lot of big words in there. And I have a basic understanding of those words, but they weren't doing it for me. You know what I mean? So I looked it up, because oftentimes when I look up words, 
I get a deeper, richer understanding of that word. So omniscience, having an infinite awareness, understanding, and insight. The quality or state of knowing all things. Omnipotence is the quality of having unlimited power, authority, or influence. On omnipresence, being present in all places at all times. So then I could rewrite my definition of the recognition step as the realization that there is one presence, universal, which has infinite awareness, understanding, and insight. And it has unlimited power, authority, or influence on all of creation. And it is present in all places, in this moment and always. After contemplating this over the past year, I don't know that I have yet to fully comprehend that. You know, it's kind of like looking at the eclipse that we saw or laying on the ground when you're camping and seeing the multitude of stars or standing at the ocean and hearing that crash of waves. It's a lot and it's powerful. I do know that when I am in prayer and meditation and that knowing drops from my mind into the center of my being, it is the power that fuels my life. This naturally moved me into step two, which is unification. Ernest Holmes tells us, we have within us a power that is greater than anything we shall ever contact in the outer, a power that can overcome every obstacle in our life and set us safe, satisfied, and at peace, healed and prosperous in a new light and in a new life. I know this to be true, not because somebody told me, but because Donald challenged me to put these principles at to work in my life, and I have. And my life is nothing like it was 20 years ago. Nothing at all. So that's where I speak from, is that deep knowing. So I took these ro words and wrote my own personal definition of step two, or the unification step. I recognize and embrace the truth that the one universal presence which has infinite awareness and influence on all of creation, is present within me in this moment and always. Therefore, any perceived obstacle or condition simply falls away and my path is made clear and I step into my new life with confidence and joy. When in spiritual practice before starting my day, I am fully present with these truths I have shared. And then I open my email, turn on the news, get cut off in traffic, and I come fully into what I think of as being human. So though, although I have the desire and the knowledge, I don't always embrace this truth of myself or others. So I started asking myself these questions in moments of doubt, usually before I react, and they help, me bring, help bring me back to tr the truths that I know. What if I lived my life fully embracing these truths? What if I treated each person and all of creation as an integral part of the whole and therefore divine? What if I'll just close with this final quote from Dr. Ernest Holmes. All the power of the universe is with you. Feel it, know it, and then act as though it were true. Act as though it were true. Thank you.
Good morning. I'm very happy to be here with you all today again. And um, my, I will be talking about the third step of treatment, which is called realization, affirmation, or declaration. Pardon me? Oh, sorry. I'm Mary Cordell. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, hecklers, okay. <laughs> Okay. So we're taught over and over again that spiritual mind treatment is a thought plus a feeling equals a demonstration. Well, what does that really mean? So I'll work on breaking that down for you. Um, if you've been in classes with me, you'll know that I often talk about how my home manifested. Um, this was 13 years ago, and things happen every single day. It's, it's really hard to pinpoint one because... You know, everything from parking spots to uh, trips that I never thought I would be able to go on, finding a home. So the thought was, I wanted a house. And so I started looking on the MLS, and for about a year, this house kept showing up. And I kept thinking, well, that's really not what I wanted, but it's a house, you know. I, but then I had to really get into, when I was ready, when I was really ready, I had to get into the feeling of it, the thought plus the feeling. Well, did I just want a house? Why did I want a house? What it really came down to is I wanted a home. I wanted some place where I could be. And I had to know what home meant. So I had to do some work around that. What does that mean? So once I identified what home meant for me, then everything fell into place for me to buy this house. The realization step is a statement that sets into motion a new cause which takes form. The realization step should be active voice, present tense, and positive. Active voice talks about the experience you want to have, and it goes something like this. I feel comfortable, safe, and secure in my home. I meditate daily in this space in my home that I created just for that purpose. St statements like that to bring it right home. Present tense. It can't be, my house will be this. It has to be, my home manifests in this manner right here, right now. It, you can't put it out in the future. You can't worry about yesterday. You can't change that. You really can't project into the future because you don't know what's going to happen. You, can only, you only have right now, right here and right now. Always express what you want, not what you don't want. And the realization step can be short or long. And when you feel complete, whether it's a short or a long statement, when you feel complete within your soul, within your heart, the treatment is done. It's also, uh, it's also good to be specific without outlining. And what does that mean? I had, like I said, I had seen the picture on the MLS of my home, and I would have to say in my treatment, I want this or something better. Because how do I know that that place was actually the place that would be the best place for me? So I knew that when I opened to the possibilities of this or something better, that I allowed my mental equivalent to step aside and allow God to bring me that or something better. And I also want you to keep in mind that God does have a sense of humor. Now, I, I don't have time to tell you any stories today, but sometime we'll talk. And my favorite story is a story that involves online dating. And you can just imagine how funny that is. So, <laughs> so I hope that you have learned something today. And now I'll turn the time over to my friend Diane, who will talk about uh, Thanksgiving and release. Thank you. Good morning. It's great to be here. Just wondering... Um, how many of you are feeling that your heart's expanded since you just walked into this building? 
Yeah, I know I am. It makes me kind of want to giggle inside, maybe weep a little. But um, yeah, I'm grateful to be here. So I'm Diane Christensen, and I'm speaking on the fourth step, known as Thanksgiving or gratitude, and the fifth step, which is release. <clears throat> so up until now, we've spoken words that cause us to feel and believe in the truth that God or the divine is real and exists from beyond, yet within this landscape of time as we perceive it. We spoke about our oneness with this great spirit. Then we spoke our truth in present tense regarding the root of our prayer. Step one, two, and three enables us to witness this and believe this beautiful power or piece of art that we're co-creating with the thing itself. Ernest loved to refer to this presence, and also Myrna did too, in practitioner training, as a thing itself. <clears throat> this brings us to step four, thanksgiving or gratitude. An attitude of gratitude moves me with great magnitude. This is where we give thanks for the gift of our affirmative prayer. Speaking our, th speaking our thanks invokes inspiration and feelings of elevation. This is the icing on the cake, nummy, so to speak. This is also the perfect time to give thanks for the blessings in your life. Gratitude lifts us to a higher frequency. For me, I might say, I am grateful to know that I am powerful beyond measure, and I give thanks that I have been gifted to receive and demonstrate my life outside of corporate America, living the, li the yogic principle lifestyle. So I give thanks throughout my day for my life and how thankful I am living that life outside of corporate America. It's okay out here, everybody. I am blessed. <clears throat> And at last, <clears throat> we're at step five, the step of release. Here we release all we have affirmed to God, to the universe, to the thing itself, knowing that it is already done and complete. We are now complete with our part of co-creation, and we need to move out of the way. Just like when you have prepared the soil and planted the seed of life to occur, you don't go back and peek inside. You let it be knowing that all is well. For instance, you might say, with love and gratitude, I release these words and allow them to unfold, knowing that it is done. And so it is. Thank you. I'm Reverend Lynn Hagster, and I have a ceremony now that we would like to work with our practitioners. So I want to call all of our practitioners up to the front, please. When our practitioners have been in service for a certain number of years, 5, 10, 15, it goes in groups of fives, they are given a pin for their years of service to show how long they've been working with um, the philosophy and with spiritual mind treatment. And so I have a couple pins to give this morning. Um, Christopher Steele is not here this morning, but he is going to receive a five-year pin for his five years of service as a practitioner. Mary Cordell is receiving a pin for 10 years of service. <laughs> Linda Brewer is not here this morning. She is working. She got called into a special work um, experience this morning. So she is also receiving a pin for 10 years of service as a practitioner. And each year we will do this with our practitioners so that everyone is always recognized and we always want to know that we have our em emeritus practitioner, Audrey Gum. 
How many years now is that? 20, 24 years of service as a practitioner. So that's fabulous. What? I'll tell you about that. So um, at this time, we are going to honor a new practitioner, Theral Hinckley, has finished his training and his licensing. And we are welcoming back Alvin Goldman into our group and Missy Jolly. And we are rededicating with our group of practitioners to their service to our center. And so I will speak to Farrell first, Farrell Hinckley. You have chosen a pathway in life as a new practitioner that is rich and fulfilled with beautiful spiritual discoveries. To serve as a professional practitioner is to lead those who look to you for spiritual guidance into an assurance and an acceptance of wholeness of soul, spirit, and body. The deep understanding of life's principle of human nature, your compassion and warm empathy will be called upon by those who look to you and all of our practitioners for the living demonstration of our teaching and our practice of spiritual mind healing. And so we now ask you, Theral, to pledge your alignment and allegiance to the teaching, the methods, and the Salt Lake Center for Spiritual Living. Thank you. <laughs> to our team of current practitioners, we invite you to rededicate your alignment and allegiance as a practitioner. And so I will ask these questions. Do you give your loyalty and support to the Centers for Spiritual Living, agreeing to live by its principles to the best of your ability? Do you agree to abide by the policies and regulations which govern a professional practitioner of the Centers for Spiritual Living? Do you dedicate yourself to faithful meditation and diligent study in order that you may expand the consciousness of your professional practice? Do you commit yourself to absolute confidentiality, keeping safe the identity and confidences of those who come to you for help unless you receive their explicit consent to do otherwise? Will you uphold and support the church center through spiritual mind treatment? You do and you will. Do you feel your heart... Do you feel in your heart that you are qualified and prepared and ready to serve or continue as a professional practitioner of religious science? Fantastic. Practitioners, your mission is to recognize the deep and abiding harmony at the center of everything, to see through the existing circumstances and affirm the truth that sets each person free. In the fulfillment of your mission, you have the same assurances expressed by the great master, it is the Father within who does the work. By the authority invested in me as a licensed minister with the Centers for Spiritual Living, I celebrate and confirm your dedication as practitioners of the Centers for Spiritual Living. Don't go away. Farrell. Come over here to the center where I can reach you. It is customary in esoteric societies that a new cloth, such as a stole, is given when a person reaches a new level of consciousness. Thorough Hinkley, this is your stole that will signify and identify you as a professional practitioner with the Salt Lake Center for Spiritual Living. And so now, to everyone in attendance, these are your licensed professional practitioners. Please get to know them. Use them for prayer, and let them speak the truth for you and about you whenever you need it. Thank you. Congratulations. <laughs>